Let us try an example to estimate the size of a reinforced concrete beam. This is a concrete lintel. It is used to support wall thickness of 230 mm. Its effective length is 4 meter. The GK and QKs are 100 kN and 40 kN respectively. The concrete grade is 25. The question asks us to determine a suitable dimension for the lintel. You may pause the video for you to work out the solution. The beam size should be equivalent to the thickness of the brick wall. Therefore, the width of the beam is set as 230 mm. First, we need to determine the load acting on the beam. As we do not know the size of the beam yet, so we do not know the weight of the beam. We assume the weight of the beam as 14 kN first. The ultimate load is calculated by multiplying the factor of safety of GK and QK of 1.35 and 1.5. The 14 kN is considered as a permanent variable. Therefore, the permanent variable it will be 100 kN plus 14. The total load it will be 214 kN. The maximum shear force it will be equivalent to the reaction force at the both ends. Therefore, the total force divided by 2, which is equivalent to 107 kN, will be considered as the design shear force. Assuming the load acts on the beam in the form of triangular load distributions, the moment load acting on the beam it will be given by equation FL per 6, which is 143 kN. Now we follow through the calculation steps given in these slides. First, we compute the factor K. Assuming there is no compression reinforcement bar, therefore the K is limited by 0 0.167. Substitute the relevant value, you will get the D to be at least 386 mm. For the time being, we still do not know the concrete cover, the shelling, and also the main reinforcement. Therefore, we can always go for a conservative assumption. In this case, we assume that concrete cover is 25, the shelling is 10 mm, and the steel bar is 32. Having known this number, you can compute the overall beam depth. The beam depth should be at least the depth of the beam, the size of the shelling, half of the size of the reinforcement bar, and the cover, which in this case you should have at least 437 four, mm beam depth. In this case, we assume the beam height is 525. Adopting the beam height of 525, we work out a new dead beam depth, which is 525 minus the cover minus the shelling minus the main reinforcement bar divided by 2. Now the new beam depth is 474. Substitute the relevant value into these equations in order to determine the maximum resistance shear force of the beam you will get the shear force to be 442 kN. Compared to the shear load of 107 kN, it is greater than the shear load. Therefore, the shear resistance is considered acceptable. Next, we check for the basic span effective debt ratio. The actual L per D ratio is calculated from the effective length 4000 divided by the beam depth 474 which is equal to 8.4.
next we look for the limiting L per D from table 7.4 and in Eurocode from table 7.4 N we assume that the steel bar is slightly stressed and the beam is simply supported therefore we are looking at 20 L per D ratio so the limiting L per D ratio will be 20 it is found that the actual L per D ratio is actually smaller than the limiting L per D ratio therefore the deflection is considered acceptable there is one more item that you need to cross check at the initial stage we assume that the weight of the beam is 14 kN we need to calculate the actual weight of the beam by using the volume multiply the unit weight of the concrete in this case the weight actual weight of the concrete is 12 kN which is smaller than the assumed load of 14 kN therefore the assumption is valid in case that your assumed value is less than the actual value you might need to cross check again with your size in this case the H assume H taken is relatively high compared to the required the checking may not be that necessary as the assumed load in comparison to the total load it is only constitute a small portion of it therefore the assumed size of 230 times 525 mm and it is likely to pass in the design